Hello, I'm Elizabeth Kane. I'm an artist in the Northeast, and in this video, we're going to be using watercolour pencils. We're going to be trying two different techniques. Before we get started, you're going to have to gather some things. So, to take part, you're going to need at least two sheets of paper, watercolour paper ideally, a pencil, sharpener, and eraser, a selection of watercolour pencils, but you don't need loads of them. A small amount of water, some paper towel or loo roll, kitchen roll, and a paintbrush. I use a small round brush, it's a size 3. You might also want to get something that you can draw from, but you can always use your imagination. In our first activity, I've used a festive decoration. I picked something that looked like a plant because natural shapes tend to be easier to draw and I wanted to warm up. I decided to set myself a challenge for the second activity and picked an image from a magazine. However, you could pick any image you like. I've been drawing lots of images of snowy scenes I find online. You might even decide you want to try something really challenging and draw a room inside your house or go outside to draw. Now, go and try and find those materials. Whilst you're doing that, I want to say a big thank you to the People's Postcode Lottery and the Shipley Art Gallery for making this happen. We are all creative and it's lovely to be able to make new things. I made this film with families in mind, but anyone can take part. If you give it a go, I'm sure the Shipley Art Gallery would love to see your work. Make sure you share your paintings by tagging the Shipley Art Gallery on social media. They've got a Facebook, Twitter and Instagram page. Are you all set? If not, press pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. You've got all your equipment and now find somewhere comfortable where you can work. Let's begin our first challenge. A portable watercolour palette using watercolour pencils. In this activity, I begin by using a long pencil, that's two pencils stuck together, to lightly sketch a festive decoration. I spent about 15 minutes making my drawing. I use tickle pressure, that's where your pencil just touches the paper. I want to create a really light outline of the basic shapes. Now, I've picked a festive decoration. If you pick something natural like a plant, it's usually a bit easier to draw because flowers, leaves and all living things tend to be quite varied. As long as you're reasonably happy with your drawing, you're ready for the next step. Now, the great thing about watercolour pencils is that the pigment, that's the colour, can be picked up with a wet brush. So, I've decided that rather than add colour shading to my drawing with the pencils, I'm going to create my own palette. For this film, I've just put them to one side of the piece of paper, but you could create your own palette on a separate piece of paper, which would be really handy for taking out and about. You need to create a patch of every colour you need. I've just created small patches. Notice how I'm pressing quite hard. I want to get lots of pigment, the colour from the pencil, onto the paper. Now, you don't need loads of different coloured pencils, because you can blend them to make your own colours. I remember looking at big fancy sets of watercolour pencils and thinking, oh, I'd love one of those. But now I just work with some old watercolour pencils I've had for a very long time. I got them from WH Smiths, but lots of shops sell them, and you can find them online. Now, I'm about to begin painting. Did you notice I dipped my brush into the water it wasn't dripping wet. One of the most common problems with watercolours is that people use too much water and the paper goes bobbly and horrible. If your brush is too wet, you can always use some kitchen towel to wipe it off. I take the tip of the brush and I swirl it in the patches of pigment. See where I hold my brush? It's about halfway down the handle. The further up the handle you hold your brush, the lighter your brush strokes will be. If you hold the brush closer to the ferrule, that's the metal part that holds the bristles in, you'll have a little bit more precision, but 
it's easy to press far too hard. When I start adding colour, I'm applying light washes. We can blend colours together by putting wet colours or washes next to each other. If we want lots of definition to our brush strokes, we want harder edges, you wait until a wash is dry before adding another colour on top or next to it. Make sure your painting has light and dark areas. That creates the illusion that it is three-dimensional. Not a flat picture, but something that's really alive and exciting for people to look at. When I add the washes, I try not to get stuck in just one area. Can you see how I'm moving from petals to leaves, adding washes to gradually build up the image? Notice as well how I keep my wrist arched. I don't want to rest on the paper and risk smudging my painting. Some of the first areas that I painted are now dry, so I can go back in and begin to build up more texture and detail. Can you see, just by putting more layers of the same wash over an area you've already painted, you can get some nice dark tones. If you start to find that there's not enough pigment in your palette, you can always create more patches. If you're taking your palette out and about, try and make your patches quite big and dark, so you don't need to top them up. As your painting progresses, you don't always want to use flat washes. Sometimes you want to start to vary the marks that you're creating. Think about using just the tip of your brush, or if you want really big marks, using the side of your brush. Here I begin to start adding some even darker tones by blending colours that create a pale purpley grey. Some people think that you shouldn't really use black in watercolour paintings, but I'm not one of them. I don't think there are any rules in art, and as I discussed in our other video about drawing, you can't really make a wrong piece of art. But by using a pale purpley grey, I think that it creates a more subtle effect, which I really like. One thing you can't really see in this video is how hard my eyes are working. I'm really looking at the object that I'm painting and noticing where the different colours, shadows and textures are. I want to try and make each part of my painting look like the thing I'm examining. Notice how the texture of the leaves is very different to the texture I'm now applying to the berries.
To make nice greys, I like to blend complementary colours. They're colours on the opposite side of the colour wheel. So here I'm putting down some blue and some orange and I'm going to mix it to make a grey. You could use red and green or you could use yellow and purple to do the same thing. If you've got time, it's definitely worth trying that and seeing the different properties of the greys you create. I think we're coming up to quite an interesting part of the film now, where I've begun adding shadows underneath the leaves. You'll notice in the first shadow I paint an outline of the shape and then fill it in. This isn't very effective because shadows don't have hard edges. Notice on the next shadow how I fill in the shape using light horizontal brush strokes that overlap. It fills up the space more evenly. Can you see what I mean? So they're my top tips for using watercolour pencils to create a palette and some general painting tips when using watercolour. How did you find it? Is it something you've done before? Is it something you think you might like to take out and about? It makes it really portable because all you need is your palette, some paper and a brush. You could bring some water in a little bottle. I've even seen some brushes that hold water in the handle. I hope you've really enjoyed our first challenge and are ready for our next. Using watercolour pencils to draw and going from dry to wet. Thanks again to the Shipley Art Gallery and the People's Postcode Lottery for letting me make these videos for you. In our previous challenge, we created a drawing and then added washes of colour using our homemade palette. In this challenge we begin by creating the outline drawing. I decided to use this image I found in a magazine, but you could pick anything to draw for this technique. I picked this picture because it's got lots of colours, so I know it'll be good to demonstrate this method of using watercolour pencils. I start off with an HB pencil to sketch my outline. I've chosen an HB pencil so you can see what I'm doing. If I wanted to be really clever and make sure my line drawing disappeared in the finished piece, I might choose a light blue watercolour pencil to draw my outline. Using the same material to draw your outline is a really useful thing to do. If I had used a watercolour pencil, it would be water soluble. The pigment would dissolve into the water and any harsh outlines would completely disappear. I know this short film is concentrating on watercolour pencil techniques, but it's worth noting when I draw I begin by noticing any big shapes. So I start with the horizontal line that's the mantelpiece and then the vertical line. If I'm happy with the size and shape I start to add more detail. This helps me create a proportionate drawing. Do you know what proportion is in art? It's the relative size and shape of things. Is this bit bigger or smaller than that bit? Does this part come up about halfway? Does this bit come across about two thirds of the way? Some people like to use a grid to make their drawings really accurate. Remember, we can take things that we learn in other subjects like maths and use them to help us in art. Fractions help me so much when I'm drawing. Sometimes if things are really complicated, I like to give myself guidelines. So you'll notice in this drawing 
there's a rectangle sitting on top of the mantelpiece. If you keep watching this film, you'll notice how I use it to draw the outline of the leopard that was in the picture. I also added a curved guideline that I'm going to use to complete the shape of the wreath. I don't add in any tiny fiddly little details because I'm going to add more lines using my watercolour pencils as this piece progresses. This piece really shows how boxing out or drawing a basic shape can help us get accurate smaller shapes. And remember, you might not get things right the first time. You can always use your eraser on a pencil drawing. And you can use an eraser on a watercolour pencil. Although it's worth saying, it might not pick up all the colour. But remember, you don't need to worry about that because it's water soluble. Once you're happy with your outline, you can start to add colour shading using your watercolour pencils. I'm using fairly light pressure to build up patches of colour. This is going to be quite an impressionistic piece, so it's not going to have lots of fine detail. Instead, I'm looking at where different islands of colour appear in the picture. If you've been really brave and you're drawing a room in your house, you need to do the same thing. Notice where there are bright pops of yellows and reds and pinks. Spot where there are darker areas. Is there a source of light coming in from a window or perhaps a lamp in the room? I've used the orange to try and capture the glow coming from the fire. Earlier I said that I'm not drawing all the small detail. Can you see how I'm using the watercolour pencil to start to add some of the detail I missed out? I'm using short spiky marks to show where different pine needles are. Using a variety of marks to depict the different things in your picture will make it much more interesting to look at. By overlapping coloured pencil shading, or putting colours very close together, when I eventually pick up my brush I know that they'll blend together to create new tints and shades. It's a bit like where we put the two different colours next to each other to create a grey in the previous technique. When I'm drawing patterned areas, I'm not trying to copy it exactly. Instead, I'm just trying to give a sense or impression of it. So this pillow's got a strong geometric pattern on it. Rather than copy it exactly, I'm putting some strokes down and I'm going to let our brain fill in the gaps. Behind the pillow, there's a bright orange chair. Notice how I haven't spent a long time smooth shading it. Because, again, when I pick up my brush, I should be able to blend the colours and create a nice wash. In the previous part of this video, I talked about how some people don't like black being used in watercolour. Here, I'm going to use just a little bit of black to create some drama. Now, if you're one of those people who don't like to use black, you could mix a grey by overlapping two complementary colours again, 
just like we learned before. In the picture there's some really complicated wallpaper but just like I did for the cushion I'm going to simplify it and add some shading over the entire background. Generally in painting if things are lighter they're further away so although the wallpaper looks very dramatic in the picture I'm working from I'm just using light pencil pressure. Later in the video I go back and add more detail but I'll talk about that then. Once I've finished shading the background, I spend a little bit of time looking at my drawing and deciding whether I've got enough colour down on the page. I think I've got the balance about right, so about 50% of the paper is covered in some sort of watercolour pencil mark. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just demonstrating how you can use one brush to complete a whole picture. Now, if you've got some more equipment, a larger flat watercolour brush would be brilliant for doing the background. It would give a slightly different effect, but I just wanted to show you that it's possible to make interesting artwork with really simple materials and not that much specialist equipment. I used to hate it when I was little, reading books that advised you bought the best of everything. That can be dead expensive and it's totally not necessary when you're just learning. I sometimes think about really famous artists that are exhibited in galleries. Lots of them were really poor, so I don't think they had all the best equipment. After I've completed the background wash, after a little bit of tinkering, I remember that it's probably a good idea to start working on the other bigger areas of colour. So I'm starting to put in some of the dark and some of the orange glow of the fireplace. I then try to add some water to the bits that are going to be behind the detail on the garland and the decorations on the mantelpiece. Can you see when I start tackling the cushion, I add a little bit of water stroking down just as I did with the coloured pencil, but then to create some more texture, I put some horizontal lines across. Hopefully our brain will be able to imagine what this pattern might look like compared to the plain orange chair behind. If you're using this method of watercolour pencil painting, you might not want to add water to every single section of your artwork. That's another way to create lots of variety and interest. Can you see I've now moved on to adding some tiny little details, so I'm only using the very end of my brush. I haven't actually drawn black in these areas on the mantelpiece, but I can go back to the areas where there is black with a wet brush and pick it up to add colour. Now I've put down my brush and I've picked up the watercolour pencils again. This painting is semi-dry which means that the marks won't be really, really defined. Rather, they're going to be a little bit diffuse, which means a bit fluffy. That's really good for adding detail that's further away. I've started noticing the shapes on the wallpaper. The pattern is made up of big palm leaves. I'm not going to do every single leaf because I think that would get a bit overpowering 
and it would also bring the background more to our attention, which would reduce the sense of depth. In the parts of the painting where I want us to look, I'm using much firmer strokes. This piece is now a little bit drier, so the lines are more defined. They've got a harder edge and they should stand out more. I don't think there's much more I can teach you about this technique, so I think that's about it. Do check the other video I've made for the Shipley Art Gallery all about drawing. These videos have been made possible thanks to the People's Postcode Lottery. Next time you visit the Shipley Art Gallery, make sure you have a look at the different paintings on display. Can you find any watercolours? Do you think artists might have drawn the outlines for their pictures using oil paints? A big thank you to you for watching and taking part. If you've made any pictures, don't forget to share them. I'd also like to say a big thank you to the learning team at the Shipley Art Gallery and finish by saying we are all artists. <laughs>